you know, I've had great successes, a lot of fortune, you know. Just one time I wanted to hunt that buck that's just mind boggling. And uh, I think with this Loch Ness monster buck, we finally have that size of buck. We are gonna go into this with high hopes of finally connecting on the buck of my dreams and we'll see. I really enjoy hunting because one, I get to spend time with my family and two, I get to see how, where we get our food from and like how to like survive in the wild and how our ancestors survived. Like, everyone else at this time, they're all like makeup and sports and I'm like, let's go outside. Let's go be in nature. And let's go do some fun stuff and not play video games. <laughs> it's really built me to the person I am today. I feel like without hunting, I wouldn't be who I am today, and I'm just really, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Well, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We are very excited to bring the show to you this week. As it stands, we are finally under that seven day mark separating us in the opening day of Iowa's bow season. Before we jump into the show, I wanted to bring to your attention that the Midwest Grunther is available for purchase from Woodhaven Custom Paul's. Just go into the description, follow the link, learn all the details. And if you're in the market for a new grunt tube, go ahead and check this one out. Jumping into the show, we've got two stories as you saw in the very beginning teaser. First, we're gonna jump into Owen. You know, he's got that Loch Ness monster buck and on top of just the sheer size of the buck, Owen dives into what this deer means to him, how he thinks that this is kind of the pinnacle moment of his hunting career and all the goals that he set out since he was a kid. On the very flip side of that, following that story, we're gonna jump into the story of Big Mac. This is an eight and a half year old whitetail that has been on the home farm that Mike purchased all the way back in 2018. And Bella, his daughter that you've seen many times on the show, has been hunting this deer for three years. And frankly, there's not very many people that I know that have put in so much time, stuck to her goal, accomplished it, and you're gonna love her reaction when she does. So we appreciate you guys joining for this week's show. Hope you enjoy it and good luck to you the rest of this season. Did you grab the trimmer or we still got to get uh, that? It's right here. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. All right, that should be good. So as far as we're going, carry it from here. We're gonna slip in here, get our work done and get out. Because I know he's using this right here during daylight. And I'm pretty sure he's been real close to this, so. Just gonna be quiet, get in, get out. We gotta have one more set for an east wind. That's the only one I don't have a set for, so that's what we're doing today. I feel like if we can create that same scenario next year, he may do the same thing. If we're close to where he's bedding, I think we got a real good shot of getting him in that area. So follow along this year. Hopefully this buck turns into a buck of a lifetime for me. I, I feel like he's got all the makings. He's throwing on some blades, like he's gonna throw some drops on and some kickers off the twos. I really feel like he's gonna be a deer of a lifetime for me. So let's pray that comes to fruition and hopefully you guys follow along. Much to my surprise, this Loch Ness buck is daylighting right here in this plot. It's the first time I've ever had a daylight pattern on him on any year. He's walking out right over there, so 
We're gonna try and pop something up right here. See if we can get an east wind stand. Gives us one more option. We've already got one for south wind here. But it's down on this end, so it's a big plot. It's almost two acres. Makes it a little, a little tougher to get them pinched down where you want them, but we'll be in the game at least. Been dreaming my whole life of this deer. The view up there is unbelievable. The lush green plot. When he steps out, it's going to be magical. So. We are hoping that's the case. Yes. Hoping no one can make a shot on a little bitty buck. I'm trying to psych myself up. Just, you know, I've said before, these big old bucks, they put on their fur one leg at a time like all the six-year-old bucks. So he's not invincible. Ooh, that sucker sharp, too. That's a Jim Dandy there. Josh, can you hand me that lamp? See what we can do here, thank you. All right, this is not what I normally do, but I'm using the tools at my disposal here to open this up. Got the stand hung, just putting the finishing touches on the camera stand. This is some of that monster buck we planted right here. That it's that blend I had on my blog. If you watch my daily blogs, it's got purple top in it, radish, soybeans, kale, crimson clover, and there was a little alfalfa here to start with. So that's what's here. And I was hoping this Loch Ness buck would find this, and he did. He found it, and he's on it. So. I like our odds right now. Pretty pumped up about it. And we're gonna slip out of here. Be back on October 1st. <laughs> Welcome back to Midwest Whitetail, guys. I had a heck of a trip out west. You know, I went and hiked some of those mountains I hiked 20 and 30 years ago, so that was a lot of fun. But now I'm back here in Iowa putting the finishing touches on a couple of these setups for the Loch Ness Monster Buck. The one you just saw setting that tree stand, that was the that was the final piece of the puzzle right there. And that was kind of a, a reactive deal. He was daylighting in that green plot right there, which I didn't expect him to do. And so, you know, we just reacted and put a stand right there that we can hunt on a different wind direction. You know, we've got one for a south there, but now we've got one for an east wind. So that's exciting. Before we dive into this buck, I wanted to give you some backstory about where I come from and, and how I got to this point, you know, why this is a dream buck to me. It's been all these years I've been dreaming about a buck like this, but I wanted to tell you guys about, you know, kind of why that is and how I got here. You know, when I was little, three, four years old, my dad used to take me hunting. My dad and my grandpa and all of my uncles on my dad's side were all big hunters. And so naturally, I always just wanted to be with my dad. Of course, I fell into the, you know, same love of hunting and all those guys did. You know, we'd fish and spear, trap, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, whitetail started to consume me. I would say it was probably eight, nine years old only. You know, my dad would set me down in a place and say, you know, hunt right here and, you know, I'll come back and get you at dark or whatever. You know, initially maybe I just wanted to be with my dad. You know, I don't know exactly what it was that was just so intriguing about being out there or it was, you know, seeing game I really loved. But, you know, eventually I started to find something mystical or magical about these whitetails. It's like it just started to consume my life. And as I got into my later teens, you know, I was able to harvest some nice bucks for Michigan standards and I got to a point where you know shooting a year and a half old buck or a two and a half year old buck was still enjoyable I mean you still fed the family but I wanted that next challenge you know I got to where that was easy to do and, and I was putting so much time into hunting that you know I could afford to be more selective so you know the next thing 
I guess on the list of things to do was to start to travel. At that time, I was watching everybody's VHS tapes that were out. I was just consumed with it. You know, I was watching Drury's. Some of you older guys remember Alan Altizer, uh, Bob Folkrod, you know, Dan Fitzgerald, all those guys. So I was watching all of these VHS tapes that were coming out and seeing there was nice bucks in other areas, you know. And, and I knew what I was seeing in Michigan is, you know, it was a tough state to get anything over a year and a half, really. Maybe it's better now, but so, you know, in 2001, I went out and hunted Missouri. That was the first place I went to, and I had a really good hunt. I seen a 150-inch buck out there, which I maybe had seen one the whole time I was hunting in Michigan and seen maybe one 150-inch deer in Michigan. And so I just had a really nice hunt out there in Missouri. I shot a decent buck. And then, you know, I come back the following year, you know, everybody's talking about Iowa. So I put in for tags for myself and my dad to go out to Iowa in 2000 and I guess it was 2002. No, it would have been 2001. So Missouri, I hunted 2000. Then Iowa would have been 2001. Well, my dad was the only one that drew a tag. So I came out with him anyway. I just wanted to come along for the experience. And he hunted and I, I did a lot of cruising around in glass and I seen some really big bucks on that trip. And, was kind of blown away that you know an area like this even existed so that next year 2002 I knew I wanted to live in Iowa so that's what I set out to achieve you know I was like how can I get to Iowa obviously I still got to have a job it's hard to pick up away from your family and, you know just move so luckily the job I was working at the time in the pool business they opened up a branch in Des Moines so I put in, transferred to that Des Moines branch, and uh, I got that job, and I transferred out here. So by late summer of 2002, I was living in Iowa. Of course, this is, this is my dream. I'm consumed with whitetails. I'm where I want to be now. You know, the dream is to own 40 acres, 50 acres, whatever I can get at some point, and be able to manipulate it, you know, put the food plots on it, do all the things that we do now that, you know, seems commonplace. But back then, it was just a dream. You know, so then fast forward 2002, 2003, I finally, you know, I'm hunting permission at that time when I get out here. 2003, I finally buy my first farm. And, you know, even back then, the dream was always to hunt just a gigantic buck, you know. And of course, when I moved here, my goal was to shoot 150 inch deer someday. And, you know, then eventually maybe I'd like to shoot 170 inch deer. Those were like my personal goals coming out here. Yeah, of course we love hunting anyway. I mean, if you were only hunting year and a half old bucks forever, I mean, you'd still go hunting, at least I would. But you know, then you start setting goals and, and those were some of my goals when I came out here. Well, of course, I've, I've done all of that. You know, I've had great successes, a lot of fortune, you know, hunting some big deer. I've been able to shoot a couple big ones. We had, you know, bucks that you would remember, the Trey buck I never got to hunt because of EHD got him. You know, Uno, the Crabs Buck, that Wide Nine, Picket Fence. I mean, the list goes on and on. Wolverine, a lot of really nice bucks I've got to hunt. But, you know, the last five or six years in particular, I've always just wanted to hunt. One time in my life, I want to hunt an absolute behemoth of a buck. And I feel like this is that time finally. After all of these years of dreaming about a buck like this, and then the last five or six being more of a focus, that's really what I wanted to go after. Even though, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've, these bucks that I'm taking are, you know, bucks of a lifetime for a lot of guys, I get that. And even for me, they're great deer and very exciting. But just one time I wanted to hunt that buck that's just mind boggling. And uh, I think with this Loch Ness Monster buck, we finally have that size of buck. You know, when you look at the width on this deer, it is just off the charts crazy. Fantastic mass, you know, kickers and stickers all over the bases, split brows, you know, a, a drop flyer off the right side, a little kicker flyer off the left. So, I mean, his overall width is just crazy. I don't even know if I can hold myself together if I get a shot at him, but I mean, that is definitely the plan. That is the dream. We are gonna go into this, you know, with high hopes of finally connecting on the buck of my dreams and we'll see, see what happens. You know, will it be the, thrill of victory or the agony of defeat I don't know but we are going to find out it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope I can convey to you guys along this journey like how exciting it is for me to be out there after a deer like that even when you go hunting you haven't even seen him yet and you know he's there 
It is just a different level of excitement that I don't know if I can convey to you guys, but I hope that I'll do my best. And let's hope we get a crack at him. I guess time will tell, we'll see what happens. But up next is Bella's hunt. She's after a buck that she's hunted for three and a half years. He's an eight and a half year old buck and what an accomplishment for her to get the buck that she's been after for three and a half years. So I hope you guys enjoy that hunt. Well, that Loch Ness buck is something else. What a giant, and as Owen said, a once in a lifetime deer. It's pretty cool to me to see Owen this far into his career, so excited going after that deer, something that he's been striving to do for his entire career. And then looking at this hunt with Bella, you know, someone who's at the beginning of her career, uh, getting excited in a similar way, but over different things. And um, it's just fun to see the joy and excitement that, that deer hunting can bring. We're pretty excited to bring you guys the story, the story of Big Mac. It's been a, a five year story on the home farm and, and for Bella, you know, a solid, a solid three year quest. So we bought the home farm in 2018 and I didn't close on it till December. And uh, so I didn't really run cameras, I didn't really hunt it. Turning into 2019 was uh, wanting to survey the farm, come up with a plan, start strategizing how to make it better, how to hunt it. And Big Mac was one of the first bucks that popped up that was big bodied and I thought he's at least a four year old. And at the time just thought, well, he's one that we need to, we can put on the hit list straight away. And uh, actually later in the bow season, I actually had Max uh, when he was an intern out there. And at that time he was sort of focusing on the, the back plot where over the years we've had so much success and so we actually pulled a redneck blind back in there and we're bow hunting him and had an encounter with him and uh, as well as Tex for you guys that have been following along for the past few years. And he just skirted us. exciting that eight point I've got a lot of pictures of and I think he's at least a four-year-old I'm gonna sit tight hopefully that eight point makes his way back out here fast forward to 2020 Big Mac put on quite a few inches and uh, I was really focused on the buck we called turkey foot and actually ended up having success on turkey foot October 16th early in the season and then transition to hunting the river bottom farm and focusing on DAC. And so I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the home farm. Turning our attention to late season, which is a few years back, that's the main time I got the kids involved. And while the year before I th we had Big Mac on the back plot, I thought that's where we would have our best chance at encountering him. There was one day where we hunted the bottom ag plot and, and spotted Big Mac a couple hundred yards off along with Patient X up on the hill just feeding in the cut corn. And that was something that changed the dynamics of the farm year to year. You know, looking back, you can sort of appreciate that. When I bought the farm, it had been cattle pasture for 40 years. And then I started farming uh, about 57 acres of it out of the 165. And so that changed the dynamics of how the deer used it and, and where they were late season. And the, the first year we planted beans and the deer were focusing on in the back. Well, then they start figuring out where all this food is and it did change the dynamics. In 2021, picked up on chubs early in May, knew I had a good deer growing on the farm. Ended up following him all summer long. And the one main difference with that year was that I purchased the neighboring farm. And so that was 120 acres that kind of Tetris with the, the original part of the home farm. And that was all in hay, alfalfa and hay. And uh, spent a lot of time hunting the home farm that year after Chubbs, spent 30 something days out there. And so actually had quite a few encounters with Big Mac. At that time I had him at at least six and a half years old running the farm, he was a homebody, you know, all summer long he lives down along the creek and then after that he would just kind of run around the farm. We had quite a few good encounters with him early and then had a great encounter with him on November 6th down along the creek. He locked up with a doe for three hours under us.
pretty cool to see Big Mac up close like that. We had him about 40 yards across the creek. When we spotted him this morning in the CRP, I thought, he's got to be with a doe, but we never did see the doe. And then he bedded down and he stayed there for, I'd say, a couple of hours or so. And then all of a sudden, that doe got up and shot across the fence and he got up and shot across the fence. And I don't know where the doe ever went. I think she's still right here, probably 30, 40 yards away. He lost her and he's been standing there for an hour. It was like 55 minutes and he was looking around for her. Uh, we haven't really seen any cruising this morning. This creek sets up really well for them to cruise it on a south wind, but um, just haven't seen much of that. We're gonna sit here a little while longer. Fast forward to late season, Bella's up to bat. She's really um, wanting to focus on a particular deer. Big Mac had been a big part of our discussions and then we also had Patient X. Patient X had been on the farm for three years and had that cool sinus tumor and Bella was pretty focused on getting uh, him but also really wanting to try to position ourselves to get either buck. That back plot on the farm sets up the best for crossbow hunting, getting deer in close. And so that's again where we were focused and it just, Big Mac wasn't back there. You know, I had him back there a couple of times, but it ended up being that Patient X was a more huntable buck in that situation. It was that first really solid example of her having a drive and a passion to focus and um, stay persistent and patient. And she accomplished her goals. Well, it's Thursday, January 6th, and Bella uh, had school canceled today due to the wind chill advisory. And I managed to get out of work, and we are set up back on Patient X on the home farm in the same blind that we've been seeing him out of. With any luck, Patient X shows up, and Bella can uh, finish the story on that deer. It's his due date. <laughs> started hunting Patient X, I kind of wanted to be more like my dad, like he was really persistent and he just kept on going out and I was like, I want to try that. And so when Patient X came in the first time and I saw him, I was like, I want to kill him because, you know, he's a cool buck and it would be my first like milestone in hunting really. It's just, it really changed me to see how like it felt to actually like work hard for a buck because in the past I had just shot the first buck that was good, like mature deer that came in, but this was the first time I actually like struggled or kept going after him. Yeah. To really just dedicate the time, you know, you really said I'm going to commit to doing this thing and it take, it's hard to be patient, right? Whenever you have good bucks coming in and you're like, no, I'm gonna wait for patient X, that's the one I want. Yeah, especially with you trying to make me shoot another buck. <laughs> you know, we want hunting to be fun. And so hunting is, uh, we find it fun in a lot of different ways. And I think I remember telling you, because you saw me go after chubs for 30 days and you said, well, and I said, why do you want to hunt just one buck? And you said, well, you do, that's what you do. And, um, and I said, well, I've been hunting for 30 years. So it's, it took me a long time to get to that point, obviously, like most people, but obviously uh, that, was, that was fun and enjoyable and it was pretty cool to see.
One of the things that helped us focus on Patient X was the fact that a Big Mac shed early in 2021. And I was worried with his age if he was gonna start doing that. You know, fast forward on to 2022, youth season you guys seen, September 17th, opening day, we go out to the River Bottom Farm. That's where I had a really consistent pattern on the buck we called JT, shoots him in the rainstorm, and that story unfolded. We weren't gonna to continue to hunt youth season since he had already shot a buck, so we really focused on recovering that deer. I spent my entire season down at the River Bottom Farm focusing on Kelsey, and then our goal was to get back on Big Mac during late muzzleloader season. Another example of how crops have affected, I think, deer movement and, and Big Mac's behavior, we broke ground on that additional 120 acres next to us. We took it out of hay and we planted it to beans. And so when he used to, Big Mac used to winter originally to the south and then moved them over to the east the previous two years. Well, this year he's in neither one of those places. And he's in that newly planted bean field that was hay the year before on the west side of the farm. So it was interesting to see sort of his pattern change so dramatically, but I think we have a good explanation as to the fact that we were putting quite a bit of food out on the property. And so we hunted again, it was a nine day stretch last year. And over Christmas break, me, Ryan, Bella were out there quite a bit. And then I had to go back to work between Christmas and New Year's. And Bella uh, surprised me with her interest. She's like, can I just go with Rye? I just want to be out there. And she's only got so many days. And so I said, man, if you're comfortable doing it, go ahead. And so her and Rye, every afternoon I was at work and they were at the home farm hunting and they had one nice encounter with Big Mac off in the distance, cutting through the cut bean field, looking big as ever. And, and then just like the year before, he shed his antlers right at the end of December. And uh, we had to switch gears, switch gears down to the River Bottom Farm where we had the six by six popping up in one of the food plots and Bella was able to find success uh, down at the River Bottom Farm. Moving on to 2023, you know, we knew he had shed, so we jumped into the farm actually in February to try to find his antlers before they got chewed up and we started the process of planning and strategizing on how to catch up with him in the fall. It's Wednesday, February 8th and uh, we're out here at the home farm. I'm in scrubs, just got off of work. We have a big snowstorm coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we had a couple bucks drop. One of them was Big Mac that he dropped pretty early, actually in season. And before they get too chewed up, I wanted to come walk before we got covered in snow again. We just picked up Chubbs Jr. on the other side of the food plot here. And then I was standing in the food plot and I was like, is that an antler hanging in that bush? And uh, sure enough, Big Mac's left side. This is how we found it, just hanging, hanging in this bush honeysuckle. Such a cool buck. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Well, it's Tuesday, August 1st, and we have made the move down to the home farm after getting all the brassica plots in down at the river bottom this past weekend. And we are set up in the bottom plot at the home farm. You guys will recognize this. We have this set that we chase chubs around called the uh, sky box here over my left shoulder. We've got the cherry tree up the hill. But yeah, this is uh, one that we have a lot of good hunts. Even being in the bottom here, it's, it's huntable with the way the wind tracks through here. and. Um, there's a couple good bucks out here too. The main one we want to catch up with this year is going to be Big Mac, but we're going to get this drilled. I've got this brassica blend from Monster Buck and I'm going to overseed some radishes down on this end just with the hand broadcaster. So let's get in the tractor and get it done. I'm going to put some radishes just right out in front right here and then uh, just a little heavier concentration for that early season, September, early October action. 
And if they're active here in daylight for youth season, we may get the blind down here in youth season. Otherwise, right now, we have three setups for youth season just on green beans. But they do like to get out of their bed and come straight to this plot. And so this could be a good spot, particularly if it's hot in those September hunts. Hey guys, it's Sunday, September 17th. It is the second day of Iowa's youth season. We actually made it out yesterday afternoon here at the home farm. We hunted up by the cherry tree, but had a very, very slow hunt. Didn't actually see any deer while we were in the blind. Uh, we did have pictures of Big Mac there, but um, anyway, he was a no-show. So today, we have a north-northeast wind, and we've moved this redneck blind down to the bottom end, or the south end of this two-acre bean plot. Bella shot the big eight here back in 2021. This year, her primary target is definitely Big Mac. And uh, we're re-strategizing a little bit on how we're hunting him. Normally in youth season we say, kind of whatever we think is the best opportunity, but this year we'd like to try to focus as much time as we can on the home farm, just to give us a chance at getting him in youth season. I don't think we would pass one of the other five-year-olds out here, but, um, Last couple years, we've been focused on trying to hunt him in late Muzzy, and he's been shedding right around Christmas time, so we end up not getting a chance at him because he sheds his um, antlers too early. So we're hoping he shows up tonight. Anyway, really excited to be out. What do you think? I'm really excited, and at the same time, um, I definitely wouldn't hesitate to shoot a big buck, but I really want to kill a Big Mac, like really, really want to kill him. Yeah. He evaded me last year. He won't do it again. <laughs> it is about 75 degrees. We have about two and a half hours to go, so we're gonna get quiet and see if one of these bucks is gonna show up on these beans. Well, that was a pretty cool encounter. That was probably like the two of our best bucks that we've seen so far. At first we couldn't really decide who he was and then my dad was like, hey, that's droopy. I got him in the scope, but then I saw the beans were really, really tall. In the end though, he made the decision for us and he fled the plot. As Bella alluded to, there was, we couldn't quite tell which bucket was when they first came out. The younger one, the four-year-old, is a crab claw buck that we, I, I recognized him right away. We have some encounters with him last year. 
The other buck, I thought it was Droopy. You can hear in the video, I was calling him Loppy, but um, anyway, we had named him Droopy a couple years ago because that right ear is uh, broken. It kind of droops and hangs. We were waiting for him to get down to the, down to the uh, scrape where you could see his entire body. And she was just being patient, wanting to make an ethical shot. He didn't like something and they just got out of the field. It was fun to see some good bucks on the hoof out early in the plot. And uh, we're gonna stick after them. You know, tomorrow is Monday. We got the wind switching out of the south. And so we're gonna be able to go sit that bottom plot where we wanna, wanna get after Big Mac. I think that's our best chance of getting after him and try to get Belle the buck she's uh, really looking forward to getting. And hopefully we can get him down. Yeah. It's Monday, September 18th, and Bill and I have just slipped back out to the home farm along with Rye, and we're sitting in the spot we've been wanting to sit for the last few days. We finally got the wind to switch back out of the south. Rye drug this blind in here oh, about a week ago and uh, just moved it from the back plot where we normally hunt late season down into this bottom. This bottom's a little bit difficult to hunt because of swirling winds, so I don't normally spend time down here but we put this brassica plata in this is the monster buck brassica mix and then i'm over seeded some radishes kind of out in the center of it and it's just a nice secluded plot butts right up against the bedding area it's nice and cool and the deer tend to come out in uh, daylight right here there's been a ton of deer activity in this plot over the last week in daylight both in the morning and the afternoon not only is this secluded near the bedding area, but we also have a soybean field right here to my right. We've also got a big apple tree loaded with apples and a bunch of white oaks dropping acorns. So there's really everything they could possibly want. We actually got a picture of Big Mac last night up at the cherry tree where we hunted on Saturday. It was actually this morning at 5.55 in the morning going back to bed. And that's where the last picture we got of him was. He's um, that was probably a week ago. I think he's really hanging out in that bowl and in all that standing corn. But when he goes in there to bed, he has a pretty good chance of coming out to this and to these brassicas. So it's cool to see him. He still is big and healthy, looks great. And uh, we're counting on him popping up in the here. Excited to be out, Bella. Went to school all day. I, I worked at the office. Mom picked him up at school, dropped him off my office, got homework done, I wrapped up my work day, and then we, we slipped out to the home farm. So, fingers crossed we can make it happen tonight.
you're ready. You smoked him, honey. Are you sure? Yeah, yes. <laughs> you shot him in the heart. Are you sure? He just went down. <laughs> It's unbelievable. <laughs> it worked. I show Monday. I saw a twitch over. I saw a twitch and I was like, and I was like, that's a buck. Oh my God. And all I could see, you're the farthest to the left, so that little bush is in front of us. And I could just see that it was a good buck. Before I picked up the binos, he picked up his head, and the ends of his beams are kind of asymmetric. And so even without the binos, I was like, that's Big Mac. I mean, I cannot get over this. It works. What the hell? A T. He is down. Big Mac is down. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I don't even know what to say, dude. <laughs> I mean, five years of history with that deer. <laughs> we gotta call Mama. Dude. Dude, I cannot. Gosh. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Hi. Two hours of daylight left. Two. When does that happen? We're down in the Nebraska plot. She. Yeah, we're gonna bring him to the house and show you. We haven't gone get him yet. We had to come up the hill to call you. Look at that. Okay, where did you go? Look at all this. I think he just pulled those, right? You see all the bushes are broken? Oh, I see him. There. <laughs> Let's take the trail. Poor boy. He lives up to his name. Bella. Wow. What did you do? Huge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> A day to remember. See if you can move him. Been working out. I mean, who needs help? <laughs> <laughs> She's dragging a 250-pound white tail right now. <laughs> well, we killed Big Mac. We have five years of history with this deer. I've been after him for three. Finally killed him. We had two hours of daylight left. And I'm just so pumped. I mean, this is Big Mac. He's a monster of a buck, and I've been chasing him for three years. He's really been a legend on this farm. There's not many deer you get five years of history with, and you know, we could not have followed the script any better. I mean, we got a picture of him heading in into the cherry tree, which is about 500 yards from here, going back into this bowl behind us this morning at 6 a.m., and that's just, it's kind of an ideal spot to have him bed, because a lot of times when we, he goes in there, he'll come feed in this bottom and he likes to bed in this big brushy hillside. But man, essentially the first deer in the plot. I mean, we had one little doe go through the plot when we first were opening the windows. And then Bella says, you know, big buck. And there he was, he stepped out at probably 60. We all got pretty excited. We're all the nervous. The blind was shaking. Yeah, the blind was shaking. It was like, okay, everybody take a breath. He's calm, let's get, let's get focused. Make sure Rye's on him, make sure Bella. And I, I just can't say enough. I'm, I'm so proud of you. She's. Thank you. We've talked a lot over the years about staying focused when your opportunity arises. And she got that gun shouldered and got down in that scope and just stayed in the scope and, and knew that he needed to turn. And she was telling me he's quartering away slightly. He's doing this, he's doing that. We were talking about the range. And uh, I mean, she just was just laser focused. And I mean, look at this, perfect heart shot. He didn't go 50 yards. I just couldn't be more pumped. And the history with this deer, all that work over the years, all that patterning, and it all comes together. And she made a great shot, made a count, and here we are sitting behind a legend of a buck. I could not be more excited for you <laughs> and just us as a family. A lot of work, and um, it's pretty cool to get such a great buck down. Bella's got two bucks down so far for 2023, and she's saying, what am I going to do now? So <laughs> we're going to... Uh, refocus on some of the brothers and sisters. Bryn, uh, her eight-year-old sister's very interested 
And even my, my second daughter, Anna, is uh, a little more interested this year. She, she's hunted one year, and then this year she was saying, I think I want to go again, but she wants to go with the crossbow late muzzy. We'll see. I think Bryn may want to come out. And uh, we're gonna get, we're getting excited for the opening of the archery season. And uh, it feels good to get such a great buck down already, have him recovered. She's uh, it, it, it's certainly a confidence booster after what happened last year. Um, but two great, great shots this year, short track jobs. And like I said, I couldn't be more proud. <laughs>